So it's interesting, we're talking about our history and what's presented in our schools and what's contained in our libraries and how important it is for us to make sure that that information gets into the classroom, into the minds of our students. And so we have a wonderful person in our community, David Contreras, who has been working with the Houston Public Library System and going into the archives. And I wanted to share this story with you. So David Contreras was looking through the archives and was able to find the Felix Fraga files, which are contained right next door. And so we have a film that he discovered. It was contained on old, an old reel, and he was able to convert it to a digital form. And so now we are going to be able to share that film with you. Most importantly, this film is about the Little School of 400. And the Little School of 400 was a fantastic, innovative, transformative opportunity to allow young people the opportunity to learn 400 key words in English, to be able to empower them so that way it would help them in the classroom. It was actually utilized in the 60s at a House Education Committee to formulate Head Start. And we are so appreciative of LULAC, of our champions and our leaders from our community, including um, we had a wonderful restaurant in the community called Felix, but the hero was Mr. Felix himself, who was a champion for the community as well, Judge Hernandez as well, and Tony Campos. And so I believe we have some members from the family that are here with us today. Do we have, we have Mr. Mark Campos and Mr. Tony Campos. And so I just wanna say thank you very, very much. Thank you. living legend in our, yes. in our national history. So thank you. My name is Tony Campos. This is my son, Mark Campos. I, I was involved in this little school of the 400. The 400 were the basic words needed for a youngster to enter the elementary level schools, and it was up to Mr. Felix Tigrina and myself as an educator to promote and develop those 400 words that were so necessary so our children could compete in the first grade and not to be in the low first. They were American citizens born here, and they were entitled to all the education facilities. And that's why I enter the fight with Mr. Felix de Cadena to promote a preschool program for the children of the state of Texas of Mexican descent. Thank you.
Ten years ago, in this little Texas town of Ganado, Isabel Berber started the school. She could not speak enough English to ask for a drink of water. Can you imagine yourself as a six-year-old in school, unable to speak or understand those around you? Today, Isabel remembers those frightening months in the first grade in school. Although she has not yet finished high school, she is trying to prevent other youngsters from experiencing the uncertainties she knew. She is teaching preschool children to speak English. Each morning, Isabel collects her class from homes like these. The children have eagerly taken to their new language. Isabel remarked once that organizing these classes and convincing the adults of the need was more difficult than instructing the children. The idea of organizing came to Isabel one day while she was reading a teacher. From her personal experience and her work with the League of United Latin American Citizens, she was doubly aware of the predicament of her fellow Latin Americans. Without advice or encouragement, Isabel presented her English teaching plan to the school principal. It was well received. The parents of the children, however, were skeptical. At the beginning, her classes had four pupils. It has now grown to 47 children. She also has a class of 35 students in the neighboring town of Edna. Obviously, the parents are now in accord with Isabel's classes. Isabel still conducts the classes each day without pay. Only incentive is the personal satisfaction of working successfully for her girls. To Isabel, the problem is a simple one. The Latin American is not adequately educated. He is not educated because he has not learned to speak English before he enrolled in school. Her solution is the only solution. Teach the children to speak English. Isabel, however, is only one person. Many more teachers are needed to teach preschool children English. The lack of the ability of the Latin American to speak English before he enters school is the primary reason Latin Americans attain only a 3.5 average grade level while the Negro attains 7.2 and the Anglo attains 11.5. Who is to blame? Ignorance. The lack of education is reducing the Latin American to a second-class citizen. Each fall, we have hundreds of thousands of Latin American children entering school. These children are natural-born American citizens like your children. They are not immigrants. The language barrier, the inability to speak <coughs> and understand English, these Latin American children from their classmates, speaking no English, these Latin American children are shut out of the activities in the schoolroom. Their desire to learn is squelched. Instead of becoming a working part of the whole group, they become sullen, turn inward, neither. At first, each unto himself, but later, with other Latin American children, into a small, isolated segment. Thus, at a time when the child needs to feel a part of the group, since he has recently been separated from his home to go to school, he feels alone and unwanted. And this feeling spreads to all of his activities. The other children cannot understand him, and he cannot understand them. So they don't want to play with him. He is confused and bewildered and doesn't understand why he should be so different from other children. He wants to go home to his own family, his own neighborhood, where he can understand what is being said, and people can understand what he says. In order for us to understand the problem fully, it is necessary that we examine the conditions which have allowed the situation to exist and continue. As with many minority groups, our Latin American citizens are usually clustered in one area. Most Latin American adults spend their home and working hours in association only with other Latin Americans. Thus, children grow up speaking the language of their ancestors, the language of a country in most cases, they have never seen. Since they have no preschool contact with people speaking English, they have no opportunity to learn to speak and understand it. In his home life, the Latin American child learns the customs and habits of his parents. 
who learn them from their parents, who learn them from theirs. Usually, there is no conscious effort to immerse the child in the ways of his forebearers. He is not exposed to English, so he doesn't learn English. He hears his parents speak Spanish. He sees only the Spanish newspaper his parents read, and he hears only Spanish radio broadcasts. The child's parents have never understood the necessity of learning the English language, so they have made no attempt to teach the preschool child English. And so often the first contact he has with English is going to school, where he immediately becomes an outsider in a room full of other children who understand and speak this strange new language as readily as he understands and speaks the language of his parents. The tragedy of this situation lies in the fact that almost all children want to learn, and they ask that they be provided the basic tools for the task. No child chooses to be an outsider in his first encounter in school. His natural inclination is to be a part of the whole group. The Latin American child has been part of a group in his home, in his neighborhood, and when he goes to school, he expects to become a part of a still different group there. Another major cause of this language barrier problem is the migratory nature of the farm worker. Usually coming to this country with no skills learned in his native land, he is forced into migratory farm work to support his family. And while he and his family are traveling with the different crops or harvest seasons, his children have little or no schooling. The child doesn't get started in one school till it's necessary for the parent to move on to another area. When the child is behind at the start of school, his only prospect is to lag farther and farther behind until he seriously doubts the wisdom of attending at all. Usually, a Latin American child will attend school only until he is old enough to begin working. He quits school with a feeling that he has been cheated, forced to remain behind while other children his own age advance to higher grades. He is often filled with a mixture of anger, shame, and a desire to blame somebody. Only he doesn't know who to blame because he doesn't understand the conditions that made it impossible for him to keep abreast of the other children. But he finds that even quitting school and going to work isn't the answer, for his own power is tied to the type of work he can perform. And with his meager education, he isn't equipped to do anything except menial labor. If this lack of education among our Latin American citizens is allowed to continue, they will become an economic liability instead of an asset. The Southwest has enjoyed the Latin Americans' contributions to its social and material life. The border states have adopted their products, food, architecture, and music. Suffice it to say that this educational problem must be met head on immediately in as many places as there are Spanish-speaking preschool children. We cannot afford to shrug off the life of an individual with the excuse that he is solely responsible for his personality or that it doesn't concern us. Since we are a part of society and he is another part of society, we must accept some responsibility for the conditions which mold his personality. What is being done now and what can we expect in the future it has been proposed that something be done to overcome the language barrier, not just with children, but with all ages. Because of the strong musical background of the Latin American people, they listen to the radio much of the time. It is then one effective medium through which the English language could be introduced into the home. Such a method would be doubly advantageous since it would allow all members of the family to share in a common experience of hearing English spoken. It would likewise encourage the child to study the language with more zeal. He would not be an outsider in his family if they too spoke English. Another example of family participation is already in practice. The junior forum in Houston conducts regular classes for Latin Americans of all ages in which they are taught to speak and understand English. Classes like these are contagious in two ways. The Latin Americans in other cities will hear of the progress being made and set up their own program along similar lines. And as the individuals in such classes advance, their example will encourage other reluctant persons 
to join such classes. Many business and fraternal clubs in cities where Latin Americans are centralized are today providing leadership and sponsoring similar classes for all ages. Studies have shown that the average child starting the first grade of school needs a 400 word vocabulary. Providing this vocabulary will assure that the child will not be left out of classroom or playground activities. Confusion, resentment, bewilderment will have no opportunity to gain a foothold in these children's minds. From their first day in school, will feel like accepted members of the group. And the transition from home life to school life will be a natural one as it should be. We know that the situation as it exists we recognize the remedies which must be applied. All we require is the interest, the energy, and the courage to put these remedies into action. There's no risk in this venture. We're not gambling. Any action, no matter how small, is a step forward. The success of any program among preschool Latin Americans is limited only by the amount of time and energy we wish to invest. Our investment is in the greatest of all life struggles, the advancement of mankind. Could man give himself to only one cause in his lifetime, he could find none more noble. The work of Miss Berber and others must continue. In the results of the work lies hope for the maximum growth of this world. about the importance of pre-K and full-day pre-K and early matters and how our community, the Mexican-American community and the Hispanic Latino community, were champions and trailblazers when it came to the creation of Head Start and talking about the importance of quality early childhood education. The narrator in the short film that we saw was a trailblazing Hispanic judge, Judge Alfred Hernandez. <coughs> He's not with us here today. He passed away in 2010 at the age of 93. Mm. And but we have his son, Dr. A.J. Hernandez, who I'd like to offer an opportunity to mm. some words. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is indeed an honor to be here to see this film again. Uh, it's been several years since I saw this film for the first time, actually. Even though I was living in the same home as my dad, I really, as a child and even as a teenager, could not appreciate the work that he did. I did notice that he was never home, and I always complained about this. But actually, you see the fruits of his work and I appreciate his absence was for a great cause. And I appreciate all of you being here today to be able to see this film and see if you see any similarity between his face and mine. <laughs> <laughs> so I thank you again. Thank you very much. So we know the importance of education. We know the importance of literacy. We know the importance of being able to speak not just English, but Spanish and other languages as well. And so I want to be able to first um, have an opportunity to see the fruits of what happens when someone has an outstanding education and a creative heart and spirit. And so we have a very special poet 
here today that is going to share a poem with you, and I'll allow Tony to introduce you. 